Hi everyone, this is the Enthusiast Guy and welcome to this latest Continuum 93 release. For anyone tuning in late or simply just stumbling on this video on YouTube, this Continuum 93 project is actually a fantasy virtual computer emulator that I have designed from ground up acting as a retro computer right down to the assembly instruction set that you can use to create games and applications. Given it has some limitations of the old retro era combined with some modern twists, uh, it would be a very good way to really write a retro game with that special look and feel. It features a variable frequency CPU that on average machines should reach about 20 MHz. It has 16 MB of RAM and a video architecture with a resolution of 480 by 270 pixels consisting of up to eight layers, each capable of rendering 255 color graphics with one such palette for each layer. This is currently written to work on PC Windows, but it will eventually make its way onto Linux, Mac and some microcontrollers or single board computers with the purpose of becoming a dedicated standalone retro computer. This project is in a beta state, but whatever you see, you can actually do. The instruction set is in place, we have the emulator, compiler, debugger, an efficient way of writing code quickly and easily, and all that on top of a new lightweight operating system meant to ease things up. You can download and use it from itch, uh, see the project and download the link in the description below. For today's update, I'm, I'm really excited to show you these important feature outlines. The new lightweight operating system called Q and some example programs. The more flexible way of writing assembly code programs for Continuum using Visual Studio Code. And updates on the Continuum toolset, which acts as a real-time network connected debugger. Of course, there are quite a lot of other small bits, refinements and small additions. You can check those all in the version history TXT file, which is provided in this package. I'll be going over these three major points in a second, but bear in mind that you can uh, find detailed information on those, uh, and I encourage you to do so in the provided manual, specifically the Continuum User Manual PDF, uh, the section Operating System and Assembly Development, and Continuum Tools Manual PDF. There are two additional documents available, the Continuum Assembly Reference, which uh, provides information on all available instructions, and the uh, Continuum Interrupts Reference, which shows you with examples what interrupts you can use to access keyboard, mouse, draw accelerated graphics, text, and so on. So after downloading the release package, you will find the Continuum 93 and support directories. Uh, the manuals I mentioned reside in the support, and I very much welcome you to give them a read, starting with the, uh, the user manual. Uh, the other directory contains the actual emulator, uh, which runs the operating system and programs, and the Continuum tools, which is a satellite application that connects automatically to the emulator through uh, the local network to provide a way of debugging your code. Let's start with the emulator now. Uh, as soon as you start Continuum, the uh, Q operating system is auto-loaded, compiled and starts in a split second. This provides you with means of launching the example programs uh, or programs that you write yourself. Any programs that uh, would show up here must be placed in the data file system um, let me align with this. So uh, these two are in sync. And um, I recommend having one directory per program. So it's, it's actually easy to maintain. The operating system is basically a file manager that uh, you can navigate with the arrows up, down, uh, enter to open a uh, directory. Uh, and of course backspace to exit from that directory. F5 currently toggles the full screen view. So now since we're here, let's just go over some of the example programs which are provided with this uh, package just quickly so I can show you what they do. The first one is the keyboard test. Uh, this is ran from here by pressing enter. And what it does is that basically whatever you press on the keyboard simultaneously, it shows here with their corresponding codes. That can be useful. To exit, just press Shift and Escape. Going back, let's go to the mouse cursor, which obviously just shows you a mouse cursor, which you can, of course, control with your mouse. 
escape exits mouse test this actually allows you to draw something on the screen escape exits again and palette shift this will be annoying but uh, and i'll stop it it actually uh shifts through the palette it, it changes the uh, palette so it, it shows you that you can uh, change the colors in real time and my favorite the random rectangles which of course spews some random rectangles you can see here that uh, the layering system works you have some uh, 11 rectangles on the top layer and some random rectangles being drawn behind on the second layer and that's it with the example programs the uh, source code is available for all these programs basically we ran the source code and, and compiled it uh, in real time so it's uh, starting with this entry point here for each of the examples the single file in the directory of the project uh, and of course you can take a look and see how that works uh, now since this release the preferred way of working with asm source files is by using visual studio code in conjunction with uh, the asm code lens which is a third-party extension that i have installed here uh, you can easily download it yourself two main reasons led to this uh, decision of using visual studio uh, code with this extension and i will uh, open some source code so that uh, i can show that to you let's open the actual operating system because that's the most complex program so far First and most important reason is that with this release, you are now able to use a new compiler directive, which you might be familiar with, namely the uh, include directive. Uh, what, what this does is allow you to uh, spread your code across several files, like these are here, in order to have your whole project more organized and be able to easily reuse some of your code. Second reason is that uh, with the help of this ASM um, code lens extension, you can now easily navigate through your code and jump to a subroutine simply by um, uh, control clicking on the calling label, such as let's say this one, which now takes me here. Uh, this, of course, takes you to the decla declaration of uh, that subroutine, even if it's another file, and I find this very useful. Now, this ASM code lens is not perfect for our case since we do have a more specific assembly architecture uh, for instance it won't understand how to always highlight correctly that's not the fault of the extension it's uh, actually the fact that the assembly instruction itself uh, the one that i've designed while it was inspired by other architectures it's rather unique uh, however it should suffice our needs for now again read the continuum user manual for detailed information on aspects such as coding directive and so on this release improves the logging system which is necessary when uh, something goes wrong you have a per session uh, log file in the log directory of continuum meaning that each time you start continuum a new log file is created where some more relevant aspects of what's going on are registered uh, just in case some error happens if your continuum application crashes unexpectedly for example or some communication with continuum tools doesn't work properly this is the uh, place to look in order to get a bit more uh, more of a context of what went down Aside from this, each run of an example program or even the operating system itself uh, produces some additional files. Let's go here, for instance. And those additional files will reside in an adjacent debug directory, uh, usually in the program's project folder. For instance, we have this one in the OS. And now going to the program, since we ran them previously, we have one in each folder. So going back to the operating system, these will usually have three files and this needs a bit of explaining. First off, the uh, files ending with a number at the end are the actual assembled code that's able to run at the address specified at the end of the file. So in this case, if we were to manually load these ASM bytes uh, to the address zero in the memory, 
and make a call to that address, the program will start and work normally. Uh, second, this uh, full.asm file is actually the single uh, file source code of your project after all include directives have been processed. This is created to help you in case an error occurs at a specified line for you to be able to uh, match that line number that the compiler found uh, on your actual source code since the compiler itself doesn't really keep track of all your files. What it, uh, it does, it just bundles all the files together uh, at compile time into one large file and then it processes that one. So be careful, this also means you need to have unique labels uh, across your project since they can and will collide. Third and last, we have the, uh, the log file produced by the compiler. And uh, if all went well, you'll normally only see some uh, generic information listed here, such as uh, labels, uh, recognize and statistics which shows you how much of your code is made up of actual instructions uh, and how much is just uh, reserved space, for, for instance. The uh, final part of this video will address the Continuum tools and its features. And as mentioned, this is a separate application that is able to connect to Continuum 93 um, through the local network TCP IP protocol and talk to it. Um, in order to get information about what's going on and also uh, issue some commands to it, such as pausing the execution for step-by-step -step debugging, resuming, and so on. Uh, the connection should be done automatically. Uh, whenever that is established, you will see a shift of uh, coloring in the Continuum tools from this reddish to bluish uh, whenever this is connected which is what just happened now. Uh, you'll additionally see the status on the lower right part of, continue, of uh, Continuum Tools. Uh, and also you will see the status on the emulator uh, top bar, which shows you that Tools is connected. Now, there are two ways to initiate debugging. And for, to illustrate this better, I'll start my favorite program. There are two ways, as I said, to initiate debugging. One is controlled and the other uncontrolled. With tools in focus, uh, if you press F5, basically you break into uh, the step-by-step -step debug mode immediately by pausing the CPU, which is obviously what happened here. Um, from whatever it was doing. So usually you won't have much control over where it's stopping if you press F5. This is why I like to call this the uncontrolled method. Uh, to initiate the controlled break, you need to place a uh, debug instruction in your code. For instance, let's say right here. And when the program is compiled and run, when the um, emulator will go over this instruction, when the CPU will go over this instruction, if tools is connected, it will be now the emulator who will determine entering the step-by-step -step debugging and tools will uh, comply with, uh, sorry, without requiring you to press F5 anymore. Uh, regardless of uh, which method you prefer to go into the step-by-step -step mode, from this point, you can press F9 to execute the highlighted instruction and move on to the next one. Uh, and you can observe the register values which have changed or not. Uh, if they are changed, uh, they show a orange uh, number in the area of the register where they have changed. And of course, you can observe the memory and the stacks and so on. If you are done, you can simply choose to close the tools application. And as seen here, the um, execution of the emulator will resume from where you left it off. Again, this is all documented in the Continuum Tools manual, but let's uh, quickly go over this now. The um, disassembler, let's go to it one more time. The disassembler section of the screen shows you uh, the next 20 instructions, starting with the current instruction um, the CPU stopped at, and it's ready to execute if you, of course, press F F9. Uh, you can press any of the addresses on the left side of this view, 
and these addresses will be sent to the memory view thus enabling you to see what's there in the memory where you've chosen to click uh, you can also click on some instructions which have addresses such as jump and call and the addresses of course will be sent to the memory um, view and you can even click on some instructions that uh, assign 24-bit uh, values to 24-bit uh, registers. Let's see if I can find one now for this example, an assignment uh, uh, instruction. Uh, such as this one okay we found it so clicking this will point you to this address here now let's take a look at the registry view uh, first thing you'll notice is that we're very much counterintuitively I start listing the uh, 32-bit register combination first, then I continue with the 8-bit, 16-bit, uh, and finally the 24-bit registers. Uh, while I'm rather sorry for that, uh, it was the best way for me to organize the user interface in such a way that makes more sense, since, since this, uh, this block of bytes here reflects the data that is in memory at the addresses referenced by these 24-bit registers. Uh, so it seemed only fitting uh, to offer a bit of preview of what they might point to uh, in memory. Uh, clicking on this area shows, because it switches to the ASCII view, and it kind of proves my earlier point. Uh, now you can see that some registers point to a file or directories uh, in the memory where they are stored. From this point, we can click on any 24-bit register and have its address loaded uh, in the memory view as shown here, so to inspect. Uh, now, of course, moving on to the memory view itself, since we've discussed it already by now, there is only one thing left to add, and that is you can use your mouse scroll wheel to navigate uh, back and forth through the memory. And you can also keep shift pressed to scroll more uh, lines at once. And the last view to discuss is the uh, stacks view, uh, but not so much to say here. It simply shows the contents of the register stack and the call stack with, with the latest entries on the left. So that is whenever this call finishes, for instance, this address will be popped out and this one will take its place by moving everything to the left one position. One important note is that every refresh of data you observe on this window comes after some network protocol ping pong occurred across uh, these two guys, the emulator and the uh, tools. So scrolling won't be as fast as on a regular hex editor, for instance, since each time you scroll, Continuum Tools goes to the emulator over uh, the network and says, hey, give me this amount of data starting with this address now. Then Continuum responds after a bit. However, this shouldn't be a problem usually. Okay, this was it for this update. Uh, as for the next update, I plan to add uh, the only major missing element of this puzzle, and that is means to produce sound. This is a very important part of any retro computer, and I've given this quite some extensive thought on how to do it properly. I do have a working prototype on Windows. I simply need to make sure I can have the same solution available when we go cross-platform. So again, I need to carefully navigate through this problem. But that's it. I do hope you've enjoyed my update. Again, the download links for the project are in the description below. Feel free to comment on this video if you have anything to say, be it good, or what you feel that could be improved about this project. I welcome it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.